Postmortem photography has interested me for quite a while, and the notion of commemoration connected with nationhood, such as flag fest student photographs of Abraham Lincoln, is striking. The portrayal of Palestinian resistance is another great interest of mine, so the topic of Palestinian martyr posters seemed an appropriate arena in which to consider the varied ideas about the role and use of photographs and memory in public and private spaces. Roxanne Varzi's film, Plastic Flowers Never Die, considers public photographic portrayal of Iranian martyrs. Several others have looked at visual imagery relating to what martyrs come to represent in a public setting in other locales. In this visual essay, I look at some responses to Palestinian martyr posters in the context of several thinkers of visuality that we have considered in this course. Every death is public and marked through photographic representation, one that is mass-produced and inundates the landscape with presented meaning. Through presentation as martyrs, the photographs and the posters reflect existing social relationships and simultaneously connect and distance the individual depicted from their actual existence and political factors that impact them in life and death. In discussing birth, death, and photography, in class we referenced a clarity reached through a pierced conscience, and the operator, presenter, spectator, myriad in a public street, and target, bolstering the legitimacy of Palestinian nationality, resistance, suffering, and reality, are all at work in the case of Palestinian martyr posters. The sign and referent do indeed collapse into each other, and the ubiquity of these posters attempts to ensure that they succeed in reinforcing purpose in the Palestinian cause. Roland Barthes' commentary on a photograph of a man sentenced to death is that the punctum of the photograph is that the man is going to die, that this will be, and this has been, and that a catastrophe has already occurred. Over the course of this class, I've become increasingly interested in how photographs of the dead are used. This interest ranges from photographs of the accused and soon to be executed, Ella Bart, to photographs of martyrs that show young men and women, now known to be dead, in life, to images of dead bodies used to assuage personal grief and reiterate familial ties even when deceased, while potentially standing as political, national, and cause-bolstering images. I chose to focus this essay on how commemorative posters featuring photographs of Palestinian martyrs are exhibited as a presentation of personal and familial loss, as well as conduits of nationalist feeling and proof of fidelity to a cause. Using case studies of Palestinian poster exhibition by Lori A. Allen and Lale Khalili, and commentary and exhibition of photographs, particularly of the dead, by Bart, J. Ruby, and Corinne Krantz, I hope to at least scratch the surface of understanding how the ubiquity of martyr posters in the occupied Palestinian territories and Lebanon are viewed by survivors, claimed by political factions, and serve as personal and public ideological objects, receiving projected ideologies and reinforcing ideas about what Palestinian nationality has been formed by and stands for today. The word martyr is said to come from the Greek word for witness, and during the early Christian centuries, the term acquired the meaning of a believer called to witness for his or her beliefs and, on account of this witness, enduring suffering and even death. This calls in an added layer of visuality, as witnessing may be associated with viewing an event. The concept of martyrdom is usually attributed to one after their death, which takes place in a circumstance of upholding beliefs in the face of challenge. The martyr may have been seeking death or simply living according to a doctrine or existence seen as resistant or contrary to a dominant, overpowering belief system or way of life. A simple search of images using the word martyr returns St. Stephen, the first martyr of Christianity, along with several other examples, such as Jesus Christ, as well as Gandhi, Sacco and Vanzetti, Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln, and scores of others. According to Allen, in Palestine, a martyr is a term used to refer to anyone who is deemed to have died as a result of the occupation, Christian and Muslim alike not just combatants. This explains how images of children killed in the recent attacks on Gaza are titled martyr children. While the children were not actively seeking death in the name of the cause, by virtue of dying as a child in Gaza, the children are understood to be martyrs. In the occupied Palestinian territories and in areas that house a lot of Palestinian refugees, such as Lebanon, posters depicting Palestinian martyrs cover public spaces. The photographs used in the posters range from headshots to images of the individual wielding a weapon. Some of the martyrs actively engaged in fighting, others were killed due to their involvement in such activities as rock throwing, and others died while involved with everyday activities targeted solely due to their locale. No matter the cause, the faces of the individuals can be found on banners and posters, near their family homes, and in prominent public thoroughfares. There is great tension between national and personal significance of martyrdom drawn out through the many martyr posters and in public funerals in Palestine, 
and that's what I hope to talk a little bit about in this essay. While images of martyrs do sometimes show the individual in death, think of Christ on the cross, Palestinian commemorative martyr posters feature photographs of individuals in life. An image of the martyr's death or showing his or her wounds is rare. On the other hand, martyr funerals occur daily. Nearly every funeral in the streets of the occupied Palestinian territories is considered a martyr funeral, as the death occurred under the occupation and resistance is considered part of being Palestinian. Photographs of individuals that have died as a result of war and conflict mark the height of technological innovation in warfare and photography around the time of the Civil War in the United States. Images of deceased soldiers and heralding a figure such as Abraham Lincoln as martyrs emphasized a sense of purpose. Ruby sees photographic assertions as confirming the idea that to die in a war for no apparent reason and without drama is unthinkable, for it implies that the deceased life was wasted. The value of life and the need to defend or explain deaths occurring for a certain cause made the attention drawn to individuals and causes by photographic evidence all the more important. Reinforcing the importance of struggle, particularly for a global audience that might promote an alternative view of an occupation and struggle than that maintained by Palestinians, is yet another function of presenting commemorative posters and funerals. Khalili notes that, when performed for foreign audiences, the martyr reveals the suffering of the Palestinians, legitimating their demands and calling upon the outsider's sympathy and solidarity. Khalili sees the story of the nation as refracted through commemoration of iconic events. More specifically, battles and massacres can be commemorated as heroic or tragic, depending on the circumstances and audiences, and coherence of a single national narrative can be subverted by the polyvalence of particular commemorated events. For Palestinian viewers, Allen considers the posters to be an important part of the process through which martyrs became icons. They represent their object, martyrdom or the martyr, by means of resemblance, just as any photograph does. The posters are semiotically complex as they represent both the person who was killed and the martyr that that person has become. The issue of projection, as opposed to receiving already produced ideas with images, is paramount. Individuals depicted as martyrs carry certain connotations in the very fact of their death, drawn to the fore by public display of photography with the understanding that this is a martyr. While there is a component of spectatorship, I might call it more of a case of near-universal involvement. Merely by being Palestinian, individuals are tied into a history of resisting occupation, and mainstream, often American and Israeli, media conflates identities of Palestinians, civilians, terrorists, and threats. In this way, photography in Palestine that relates to victims of either self-inflicted or targeted violence is far from photography in Civil War era United States. The culpability is very humanized. The mechanization of violence and capturing via photography is overwhelmed by the very personal reality of daily conflict tied directly to identifying oneself as Palestinian.